So what we're going to actually look at is the Maya scene itself. Um, so once you start up Maya, you obviously get all these little startup movies um, and things that will definitely help you on your way through Maya. Now it's entirely up to you if you want to follow through these little mini startup movies. Um, they are QuickTime orientated, so you have to have QuickTime installed on your machine. Uh, but in this session, we're actually going to look at all of these instead of watching it on one, vid on one individual video at a time. Uh, we're actually going to do it all together as as one session. Um, so how am I going to organize these sessions is by how I would teach them um, in my work environment. Um, being a teacher myself, so I'll do it in the same scale as as how I teach my students. So if we look at um, the startup, we can see that the things that we're going to look at is obviously create and view objects. Uh, zooming, so moving ourselves around a little bit, moving objects and scaling objects, so looking into the, the fun bits of Maya and then looking at selecting objects and how to use them and then reshaping and editing objects. I say all of this is all one series, I'm not going to split it up into five different series, I don't see the points in that at all, so we're going to obviously just do each one individually. Now I'm just going to disable this and start up because obviously I don't need this um, and we're just going to close it off. So what we have here is is our grid system where all our aka known as our perspective view um, where we'll be able to apply our polygons onto our canvas or onto our grid um, which will allow us to reshape objects what we put on on screen. Um, there are some main tool sets that we're going to look at later on in the tutorial. Um, three main ones to move objects, scale and rotate. Um, and in later videos, we'll look at things like perspective viewing, orthographic projections, extruding, deformations, uh, quite a few different things that we'll look at um, over the next few tutorials. But as I say, this one is the basics, um, just to understand Maya and how we actually use it um, as an application. Now, just to introduce you, as I said, this is the grid system. Now, my students, obviously, being part of a games development team, um, obviously, we need to make our grid system uh, the size that we would use for UDK. Um, so to do that, we'd always just go on to, um, always get confused when it comes to this bit. There you go. Onto our display. And then we're going to go to our property section, which is just allocated by the square here. Anything that you're looking for, properties, will be all allocated on this square. So we'll click this square and you'll notice that on our grid options, we have um, our defaults, which are 12 units, 5 units, and a subdivision of 5. Uh, you can also change your axes colors, um, so your axes being these axes here, um, if you feel comfortable with that. Um, and we can pretty much change these colors of our grid system here, and we could also remove options if needs be. Now we don't really change any of that. Um, what we look at is we're going to actually change our length and width to 512 units. Uh, just because that's UDK standard, so um, it makes our our grid work a lot more easier when it comes to working with large objects, um, and a subdivision of 32. Once we apply that, so if we apply, you'll notice that the grid is a heck of a lot more bigger, um, and it gives us a big more subdivision um, in regards to what we can work off. So we can apply and close on that, and we can actually start looking at our canvas. As you see, it's a lot more bigger, and we can work with that. So what we're going to be looking at today are the basic tutorials um, of Maya and how to move around and navigate that canvas. So what you saw me doing is this, right? So zooming into my my actual grid so I can actually see quite far into my grid. So four subdivisions here, obviously my centerpiece being here. I can also then zoom out. This is done by scrolling your middle mouse button. So you just scroll that in. Um, and scroll that out again. So you just scroll in and out with the middle mouse button, which will allow you to pull in and out of the objects, okay, to view your canvas. But what we first need to look at is how do we add objects onto our canvas, so onto our grid. Sorry, I keep calling this a canvas. I don't know why, but it's actually a grid. So we'll just um, add shapes onto here. Now, up here, you'll notice that we've got a toolbar section. Now, Maya is quite nice because it gives us quite a few generic tabs uh, inside the application that makes our life a little bit more easier when it comes to adding information or um, anything onto our shapes or onto our models that we need to create. With it being a very basic lesson, what we're really going to be looking at is polygons. Okay, and I'll explain a little bit more what polygons are at a later stage. And deformations is another we'll be looking at. 
and rendering which will come at later videos. So we actually get to see what our objects look like with textures and also when it comes to um, rendering out final objects that we have created. However, what we're going to do is we're actually going to just add polygons onto our grid. Now polygons um, are pretty much any shape that you would like to manipulate. Uh, shape being um, we've got our spheres, our cubes, our cylinders, uh, we've then got cones, planes, toruses, pyramids and pipes. Now these are pretty much default shapes that you do have inside Maya and everything that you do build in 3D modeling pretty much comes from these shapes. So really there is only need for these shapes and you'll be quite surprised over the next few tutorials of what we can actually build with just these basic shapes. So to add these on, um, we can quite simply just click here. So I'm going to click the cube. So we're just going to left click that and you'll notice it tells us to drag the base on the grid. So all we have to do then is just hold our left click, drag and pull. Notice it creates a simple cube. But then what we have to do is we have to drag this up to set the height. So then we just pull it up, which then creates our cube. Now, it's quite simplistic in the way that you can, if I press delete, I remove it. And again, if we click that cube, we hold left click, create our, our, our size pretty much, and then release my left click. Then I hold my left click again and pull that cube up. So that's pretty much allowing us to add polygons onto our surfaces. Now it's really important that you understand that we use polygons because it allows us to manipulate that shape. If I had to choose a surface, it's um, if I had to drag or put the surface on, notice I could still modify this, um, but it is a little bit more complicated when it comes to working with, with, with the mesh. Um, and I'll explain what that means um, at a later stage. So we can actually get rid of this because there's no need. So you can add other shapes. We can add um, our spheres. Notice that we don't have to drag up or, or, or anything off that because the sphere is obviously just a pure round object. Again, um, what you can notice is all the contour lines um, and vertexes, which we'll talk about again um, in a few more seconds. So don't really panic about these big words that I'm throwing out at the moment. Um, then obviously we've got our little cylinders here. Again, this one again is like the cube that we'll pull out and then pull up for our height. Again, giving us our lines um, and our contours and our vertex vertexes and edges and faces and all that type of terminology. Um, again, which we'll look at later on. So it allows us to add these polygons directly onto my canvas. However, the tools that are past our pipeline here, so all these here um, are tools that we'll be looking at um, and that are very important to when it comes to working with polygons. Um, for example, this one here being the extrude button is going to be very important in our future lessons when we're going to learn how to extrude. So we've got this on our canvas, we've got the cube. The question is how do we look around the cube? Because we can see this section of the cube, this section of the cube, and this section of the cube. So how would I see behind that? Well, it all lies under the shortcut keys. Now the shortcut keys can get quite confusing. What I'll do is I'll actually la add a link to um, a cheat sheet per se um, that has all the shortcut keys that are required um, to use Maya. So I'll, I'll leave that in the description for you. So to move around, really the only thing we're going to be using is the Alt key. So we're going to hold the Alt and with your mouse will allow us to navigate. So with the Alt key down, if I hold my left click and drag, notice it will allow me to move my camera around all my axes. Now axes being my X, which is this line here, my Y, which is going up and down, Okay, and my z-axis, which is at this angle. You all say to me, well, how do you remember that, Wayne? How do you know that's actually that? Well, if you look on your bottom left, which is just here, okay, you'll notice it tells you your angles. So what are you actually looking at? If I rotate my canvas, you'll see that that changes. Okay, that will rotate with you wherever you move. Okay, so that will change with it. So you always know which which axes you're working off. Now, if you're coming into Maya, you should really know how to use 3D planes and what that actually means mathematically and how we'd move things around. For a complete noob, 
basically x, y's and z's is just to move objects on an axis and how we would create a 3D object by looking at three different perspectives i.e. three different angles. What else we can do is if I hold alt and scroll you'll notice it does exactly the same thing as my zoom so there is no need for that however some people say it's a lot more smooth if I hold alt and scroll I don't really see the difference um, it's just something I don't, I don't see however if I hold alt and hold the middle mouse button down so my middle mouse button and if I move notice it's just moving my canvas I am not rotating my canvas as if I was holding alt and that basically if I'm holding alt and hold my middle mouse it moves my canvas around which makes things a lot more easy, especially if I've got very tall images. I could quite simply just hold Alt, middle mouse button, and pull up so I can see quite far up on my image or on my model. So, very, very important. If I hold my Alt and then use my right click, so hold my right click down, you'll notice this is a nice panning compared to your, your zoom. All right? Zoom is quite jumpy, whereas if I hold my Alt and my right click down, it's quite nice to pull out, right? so I'll be able to pull out um, and pan as they say. Very simplistic, very easy to use. Again, works quite nicely if I hold my middle mouse button down with the Alt, so I can pan up, and then if I hold my right key, I can zoom in. All right? Makes things a lot more easier. Then if I hold my left click, I can rotate that image. Well, if you can master those keys, so just those very simplistic holding the Alt and navigate around the canvas, it makes everything a lot more easier, especially when it comes to doing high-end modeling um, or just just the basic. The necessity to navigate is key, especially when we have quite a few vertexes and how do we, you know, how how, how do we access them? Um, so it's very important um, to learn how to navigate correctly. It takes a bit of practice, but once you understand it, it's a lot more easier. The next part is well, how do we start selecting? parts of our object. So how do we select it? For example, how would I select this face and do something with it? How would I select this edge and do something with it? Or how would I select this vertex and do something with that? Now a face is the front end of four sides. Now it doesn't have to be four sides, it could be a face of a circle, it could be the face of a triangle. Basically it's just the point between all intersectors. Okay, so all these lines here will then give you your face. So this is a face here, this bit's a face, this bit's a face. Okay, if I rotate, this is a face, again rotate, this is a face, and underneath is a face. Okay, so you've got quite a few faces when it just comes to a cube. You've got six in total, one, two, three, four, five, and six, just on a cube. So let's say I want to select one of those faces. I want to do something with it, whether it be make it bigger, smaller, or anything like that. What I'd like to do is, or what you have to do, sorry, is you have to hold your right click on the object. What's nice about Maya is that it's, it's adapted this very fast click idea, where you'd be able to just jump to something that's required straight away by just holding your right click. So as I said before, what we want to look at is we want to actually select the face. So by looking at this little smart area here, we'll notice that there's something called a face. If I keep my right click down, go over face and release, you'll notice I have the accessibility to now left click and choose an area, i.e. my faces. If I'd like to select more than one face, I'd hold my control, sorry, my shift and select more than one face. Okay, so I can select as many faces as I require on my object. Okay. So let's say I like the top end of my object. Okay, so I'm going to select that and I want to bring that higher. Okay. This is when uh, some shortcut keys are quite important to us. And if you don't really like using shortcut keys and you like clicking on buttons, I'll show you both ways and how we can do this. If I want to pull this higher, okay, to make it taller. On my left hand side, I have three tools here that are going to be extremely important to anyone that's doing modeling. Our first one here is our move tool. Now you'll notice the move tool, if you look at it in the description, it says that if we press W, 
we also have access to this key. So press W, you'll notice that what happens is I then get my axes that then display, which will allow me to pull in any direction. So if I'm wanting to make this taller, sorry, if I want to make this taller, out of my axes, obviously by looking at it, this axis here, which is my Y axis, is definitely going to make this taller. So what I could do is rotate slightly, pull up, and you'll notice it makes the cube a lot more higher. Okay. Again, if I hold my left click and pull that down, it shortens my cube. I can also push it on the X, and I could also push it on the Z, okay, which will completely deform that cube of what it looked like originally, just by moving it on three simple axes. Okay, so we can pull up and down on the Y, we can push left or right on the X, and we can push left or right on the Z, just by using one tool. Okay. We then have the rotation. Right? Now with the rotation, exactly the same rules apply. However, rotation shortcut key is the E key. Right? Anyone sort of feeling what the same pattern is here when it comes to, to 3D modeling? So we've got W, which is the move tool, and then we've got E, which is the rotate. And again, we can rotate our object by using our axes. Okay, so we can move them left or right, twist them and do what we like with that object. Again, you can see how this object is getting quite deformed by just simple rotations. However, if I rotate too much, you'll notice that the object starts to overlap and you start to get all this um, black overlap color. Now, this is never good, especially if you're modeling, so try and stay away from that. That's basically just saying you're going inside out. Think about your socks you'd never put them inside out, you always keep them right, the right way around. The same idea with modeling, you want to keep it all neat and tidy. Okay. Our last tool that we're going to look at is our scale tool, this tool here. Okay. Shortcut key is the R key. So if we think about it, it's following the QWERTY strategy. Okay. So R being for scale. Now scale is quite nice because basically it manipulates the shape on how we like it. Sorry about that. I should really turn that off. Oh dear me. Origin, please. Next. All right. So what we have is with this scale tool, we can scale our object by, again, pulling each side. Now, you'll notice nothing's really happened here because when I'm scaling, I'm not making this any bigger. Whereas if I pull this side, we can see we can scale left to right. Whereas if I, dra if I use the move tool, notice it moves the whole object. Whereas if I use the scale tool, I'm actually making a bigger, right, on the X axis. I also then have on the Z axis, if I pull that, I make it bigger on that axis. Right? So I can actually start manipulating my shape to sort of stay away from the cube and change it into something completely different. What's also not nice about the scale tool is we can actually use the center, which changes all of the directions. So we can actually make it larger. Or smaller okay by moving it on all directions okay by using um, X Y and Z and move it on the canvas so we can change it to whatever we like and manipulate it to how we like again cheat sheet will be available for you in the description um, so please check that out um, it'll give you more of an idea of what each one of these mean um, and it gives you a bit of theory behind them um, and what they there for okay that pretty much sums up basic navigation, um, selecting areas, um, and using the basic tools. Uh, next session, we're going to look at um, how to extrude objects and how to manipulate objects to the way how we like it. Thank you very much for, for watching this video. Please like, share, do whatever you need to do on YouTube. Uh, give me some feedback. This is my very first video of a tutorial, so give us some feedback on that. Um, and hopefully it'll be good enough. Again, any questions, leave some comments behind and I'll be glad to answer that. Thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.